Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here. Today I'm taking a look at a dice-driven traveling game called Jungly La. In this game, the players are going to be rolling a hand of dice. They're going to be using those dice to gather resources, to move along a path of cards, make it to the end, get victory points there, get victory points along the way, pick up helpers, and basically try to have the most points at the end of the game. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this all works together. We'll come on back after that. I'll tell you what I think of it. In the game, the players are going to be traveling through these cards that you lay out however you want to, as long as they go A, B, and C. And they are going to be uh, taking special powers from these characters that they acquire, victory points as well. Once they make it to the end, they'll start drawing from this deck, which also has victory points. And at the end of the whole thing, whoever has the most victory points is the winner. There is an aid on the back of these player sheets. Uh, unfortunately, it is on the back and you use the front. But you should have some left over unless you play with a full complement. I'm going to go ahead and throw this up on the screen for you because it's pretty dense. So here's how it goes. You roll four dice. Then you are going to lock any letters that come up. You, if you have two letters or more, you are going to stop and move on to the next phase. You get to re-roll two dice. You get to re-roll two dice again. Before you do all this, you can pay one letter to add a die. You can pay a letter to re-roll all of them. That roll doesn't count, uh, is uh, the, the two that you get. Or you can pay two letters and make a die anything. So, four dice. I roll. That's what I've got. I am going to... Uh, uh, I could re-roll up to two of these, but you know what? I'm happy with this. I'm going to keep this as my roll. Then comes part two, materials phase. I choose an option. One, I roll two or more letters, I got a letter token. I choose one result type and I gain tokens equal to that. Second option, if I roll two or more letters, I gain a letter token and then I gain one token of each kind I rolled. Clearly my option. So no letters, but I would get one of each of these from over here. I do have a, a storage limit, but I'm about to hit it. So I have six goods right there. Third option is... I don't get any of the goods, but I get two letters. Um, uh, I get two letters plus the number of letters I rolled in my roll. But I don't get any of the resources, okay? Next up, movement and discovery. Uh, you are going to move as many steps as the number of footsteps that you rolled on the dice. So yellow would go to there. Then I get to optionally, there's a few things here. Uh, you can uh, discover, which is pay a cost and acquire a card. You can use letters. And then also two letters it gets you a wagon, which is more storage as well as a victory point. You can pay three letters and discover a card that's remote but vacant. You have to make sure no one's standing on it. Or you can pay five letters and discover a vacant one uh, anywhere, but you swap with it without paying the resources. Okay. Once that's done... If you reach the goal, then you are going to start drawing from here, and there's a few new rules that come into play there. So, I get there. I cannot afford that. It takes three wood. I only have two. So, I am done, and the next player would go rolling some dice. They lock that one. They are going to uh, keep that one and, uh, oh, I don't know, that one, and re-roll that. And they are going to probably stop there. One, two, three. No, they're going to re-roll this one again. All right, I got another letter. So there we go. We are done. This player would get letters. They don't get any resources. They're going to move three. One, two, three. And they could buy this, but they can't afford it right now. So that's that. And then the next player goes. And again, I'm ignoring all of the crazy stuff you can do with the letters because there's quite a bit of manipulation that you can use those to do. They could also, since they couldn't acquire one of these, just uh, acquire one of the wagons and add that to their board right here, allowing them to store more tokens for later on. That's how the game works. You're, as you're buying these, these, these uh, cards up, you just move along, and when people behind you come by, they'll just not count the empty space. So one, two, three, four, right? That is pretty much how the game works. These are going to give you some just straight up victory points, like this one gives you five victory points. And that's pretty much it. It also has a symbol. Oh, 
It also has a symbol up here at the top for end game scoring, okay? Set collection, basically. Some of them, however, give you uh, symbols. So this one here lets you move an extra step if you so choose. When you, you know, it's like a die that rolled a step. You can choose it or not, you know, or not do so. Some give you an extra die to roll. Some are going to give you a couple of extra dice. Some give you specific uh, diamonds over there. That one has a specific scoring opportunity on it. Things like that. That's the general idea. That should give you uh, an overall impression of what's going on in this game. So let me go back up top, tell you how it feels as you're playing it, and just my overall thoughts on the design. All right, so that is the game. So let me talk about this, tell you what I thought, and I'll just put it out there. I did not like this game. I was not impressed. So the, the one thing I liked, game length is pretty good. Uh, the game does not outstay its welcome. You do modify the length of the path based on the number of players. So, you know, the box lists 30 to 45 minutes. I did not find that it outstayed its welcome. I was, um, I was content with the length. The, the issues I had here were not, did not, uh, stem from the game outstaying its welcome, okay? That's it for positives for me. I got one other thing that's a middle of the road, and that is that, uh, the ease of play, um, isn't horrible but there are a lot of little rules once you figure those out and sort of internalize them and then the player aid helps then you're you're all right for that but there are a lot of little things you can do so you roll dice cool but then it's yahtzee style but it's only two dice you get to re-roll but then you also get to add the little map before you roll to get extra dice but you can also spend them to re-roll or you can spend two to lock a die to something okay that's step one, and there's a lot of those in each of the steps. So, um, there you go with that. Everything else I was not particularly impressed with. Thematic ties, I don't get why you are picking up people while traveling the path. Um, uh, the theme is not interesting, you know. I, I, I wasn't impressed with it. I wasn't, this wouldn't bring me to the table, this theme. Aesthetics, I found to be... Oh, uh, really unattractive. Again, I, I try not to harp too much on the specific artwork of a game because you can make up your mind about that yourself. But the cover is kind of cute. This artwork is kind of cute. This is not the artwork that they use it on the cards in the game. Those I find very unappealing and unattractive. So, and then the, the iconography just looks slapped together. It has a real Photoshop-y feel to it, unfortunately, for me. Uh, the replayability. I just don't see myself coming back to this game. You uh, There's not that many interesting things along the way. You know, uh, all the characters do the same things. You are getting victory points and then getting extra dice faces, you know, and then where you land, when you land on something, if you can buy it up, buy it up, because it's points, anyway. So, there's not a lot there, you know. Uh, let's see, what else? Hmm, tactics and strategy. I found to be really lucky, you know, especially with the combination of, um, the, the traveling. Just, yeah, you're getting closer to the end, which is ultimately more points. But if I want to slow down and pick something up and I re-roll a die, I might get the same thing. That's uninteresting. That's, um... Just largely unengaging. This game sort of plays you along the way a little bit, and I didn't really like that. There are choices, most of them driven by those little maps that you cash in for stuff. But it all feels like that. It feels like a bunch of stuff. And when I'm done playing, I think to myself, okay, that was a whole lot of, um, you know, storm and drang for nothing, right? It's just, I did not get uh, any satisfaction faction from playing i did not feel like i accomplished anything in the game when you get to the end of the path you're going to top deck cards and those are victory points you get what you get at the end there uh, i i don't like this game i think there are so many better dice driven games that do manipulation of dice just fine this game has that but there are other games that do it better that do it with better graphic design that do it with more interesting themes and there are just, in general, a lot of Yahtzee-style dice games. So this one, for me, was a dud. Didn't really bring anything new to the table. And I honestly, I can't think of who I would say, you know, usually my reviews near the end, I'll say something like, but if you are this kind of player, or you enjoy that kind of thing, give this a shot. 
I can't think of the person that I would say, yeah, you need to have this in your collection. Yeah, try it. I mean, if it's sitting there at the game library uh, for the convention you're at, even then, if you're there and they have a game library and this is in it, there are other things there you haven't played that are probably more engaging than this. So you can safely skip this one, I would say. Jungly La is, uh, just feels a little uninspired, and uh, ultimately its biggest sin is that it is forgettable. So there you go. That's the game. Thanks for checking this out with me. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.